Greetings, pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are attending this seminar, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. My name is Im Mi Kyun, your presider for today. Right now is a time when the prophecies of Revelation and the secrets of heaven have been clearly revealed, which the whole world has been eagerly waiting for. And the reality of these words are being testified and spread worldwide to all mankind through Shincheonji online seminars. The pastors worldwide have acknowledged that God and the Word of Life are at Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Numerous churches and theology schools have signed MOUs to become one in Shincheonji Church of Jesus and the Word. Even now, many continue to respond positively and send praises. In continuation of the 2021 Revelation Seminars given by the Chairman and the 12 Tribe Leaders of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Chairman Lee Man Hee will be testifying to the secrets of heaven, the book of Revelation. Thank you for attending this special lesson on Revelation in the midst of your busy schedule. I pray they will be filled with God's grace and love. Let's first pray to God and then begin. Father God, you are the origin of life. We thank you for allowing us to hear the testimony of the secrets of heaven and revelation through the promised shepherd, Chairman Lee Man Hee, whom you have sent at this time of Shincheonji online seminar. Right now, a great tribulation has come upon the whole world and many people are going through a difficult time. However, we pray that you will allow us to have a burning love and hope for you and heaven. And please open the doors of our hearts for in attendance today so that we can seal these words clearly on our minds and on our hearts and perceive the true meaning of your words, Father God. We leave all matters in your hands, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we will listen to the word. What is the reason that the words of Revelation, which no one could open in heaven or on earth, in Revelation chapter 5, can come out of Shincheonji today? It is because the one who ate at the open book of Revelation chapter 10, Chairman Lee Man Hee of Church of Jesus, is here. Chairman Lee Man Hee is a living witness who stood beside Jesus and saw and heard the physical entities of Jesus' parables of heaven and all mysteries of Revelation and their reality. He is the one and only promised shepherd promised by God and Jesus in the Bible. If one is a believer who truly loves God and hopes in heaven, then he will know that receiving the revealed word from the promised shepherd and believing in it is the path of a true faith walk. At this time, when we listen to these words, please open wide the door of your hearts so that it can be a precious time when we draw near to God and the Bible. Let's greet the promised shepherd whom all mankind must meet, Chairman Lee Man Hee. Please give a big round of applause. Pastors from all around the world, how are you? I am Lee Man Hee from Shincheonji Church in South Korea. I will be sharing content from Revelation chapters 1 to 7 with you today.
You may already be familiar with this content, but I hope we will all attain our hope by having perfect faith as we study God's Word today. As we all know, God is a creator who made all things in heaven and on earth. However, God had to leave this world due to the betrayal of one of his creations. After that, God sent his messengers in every era to make known the will of the heavens. But all the messengers who were sent on earth were killed. I'm sure you already know this well, pastors. Why did it have to be this way? After God left the world, the spirit that betrayed him began to rule over it. People went against God's will because of that evil spirit, and as a result, every messenger God sent were killed. However, God continued to work a long 6,000 years to take back what's rightfully His and to make known what is true. Isn't this correct? Yes, it is. In addition, God judged and wiped away Adam's world and established Noah's world. But the devil spirit, the spirit of betrayal, remained. Thus, people continued to sin in Noah's time. And the conquering of Canaan took place because of sin, too. Isn't that the case? Since then, due to the betrayal of Solomon and the people of Israel, God again promised and prophesy the creation of a new work. That prophecy was fulfilled when God's Son, Jesus, came at the first coming. Jesus said, it is finished, then left after prophesying what would be fulfilled at the second coming. What is to be fulfilled at the Second Coming? What will fulfill are the prophecies within the four Gospels and the Word of Revelation given after Jesus' ascension. It's been about 2,000 years since those prophecies were made. Although it's been 2,000 years since those prophecies were made as a new covenant, countless people have been reading about those prophecies and looking forward to and desiring God's work to fulfill. It even says in the book of Romans that the creation waits in eager expectation. Now, 2,000 years later today, Jesus has fulfilled the new covenant He promised, which is the book of Revelation. Although the prophecies have been around for a long time, how many people truly understand and believe in these words of prophecies? Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? 
It goes to show how corrupt the condition of believers on earth would be when Jesus returns. Now, John, a disciple of Jesus, saw the content of Revelation in a vision and recorded it. Isn't that true? It shows in Revelation chapter 1 that John was the one who recorded this revelation. Yes, John recorded this revelation. However, it also says in Revelation chapter 1 that what John recorded is a revelation of Jesus Christ. So this revelation that was recorded was Jesus' revelation. Then it says that God sent his angel to John and gave him commands to make known to his servants what must soon take place. And according to what the angel commanded, John testified to everything he saw to the servants of God. Everyone, what crosses your mind as you hear these words? It's been about 2,000 years since the book of Revelation was recorded. However, not a single person understood it all these 2,000 years. Truly no one. And the reason no one understood was because although the prophecies were written, they had not been fulfilled yet. So no one could see their fulfillment, right? However, when these words are fulfilled, they will be fulfilled according to this very word. The prophecies fulfill exactly as they are written, like the stamping of a seal. Thus, what John saw and recorded was a vision, not the fulfillment of the prophecies. And John, who recorded the prophecies, was Jesus' disciple. However, at the time of Revelation's fulfillment, this John is not around anymore. John had already passed away at that time. And instead, when the prophecies fulfill, someone like John appears. Just as John saw and recorded the vision, this person who appears will testify to the fulfilled realities. Since this person who appears to testify comes in the position of John when prophecies fulfill, we will just call him New John. That will make it easy to understand, since it's just like how John saw the vision and recorded it across all the chapters of Revelation. The content recorded from Revelation 1 verse 1 to 1 verse 8 is a summarized conclusion of the entire book of Revelation after everything was seen. That's the summarized conclusion that we see. Starting from verse 9, it starts with showing how Jesus appoints the new John, shows him everything, and commands him to work according to what was commanded. So this John, the new John, hears a loud voice and turns around to see. And who does he see there? He sees someone like a son of man with seven stars walking among the seven golden lampstands. When John saw him, he was so magnificent and one to be feared that he fell at his feet to the ground. Yes, to the ground, because he could not bear to look at him. As you know very well, Paul even lost his sight after seeing Jesus. That's how radiant he was. 
We can also see how brilliant Jesus' appearance was, described in the beginning of Revelation when Jesus chose new John. It says that here in this passage, correct? It says, His face shone like the sun. I am sure His face was even brighter than the sun for someone who has actually seen Him. Jesus was in the flesh while He was on earth, but after He resurrected, He did not remain in His flesh, but had a spiritual body. He had an amazing appearance. To the point, New John fell to the ground because he was too afraid to look at him. Then Jesus told John to get up and he introduced himself. Jesus then explained the seven golden lampstands and seven stars to John and told him they were mysteries. He then told John to write down what he saw, what is now, and what will take place later in a book. Why do you think he told John to write them down? It was so that everything John saw and heard could be told to others because they were secrets. Yes, they were mysteries. No one in heaven, on earth, or even under the earth could understand these mysteries. However, their meanings were made known only to New John, and thus it is only the New John who understood these mysteries and saw their realities. Let's think deeply about this, pastors. It wasn't anyone else who was shown these things. These three things, what he saw, what is now, and what will take place later, were written down. John was then commanded in Revelation chapter 2 to send what he wrote down to the seven churches, to send the letters to the messengers of the seven churches. There's something we must consider here. New John did not get to see how Jesus first appointed these seven messengers who are called the seven stars. Yes, he didn't get to see it. However, what Jesus did first was appoint the seven messengers. It's true that Jesus chose them. However, Something went wrong. The seven stars in Jesus' hand were the seven churches, the seven messengers. And Jesus explained that the seven lampstands are the seven churches. And from the fact that Jesus sent them letters urging the seven messengers to repent, we can see that they were walking down the wrong path. The seven messengers were first appointed, but who invaded their church was the organization of Satan, known as the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans fed food, sacrificed to idols, to the seven messengers, gave them teachings of idols, and had them commit adultery. How appalling is this? But the seven messengers did not know these Nicolaitans were pastors belonging to Satan. Thus, although Jesus appointed the seven messengers, a pastor belonging to Satan, spiritually known as Nicholas, invaded the organization. Up to these events, the new John did not get to see this when it was happening, because these things were already in motion before Jesus appointed the new John and began work through him. That's why he was told to send the messengers letters to urge them to repent. The content of the letters was a promise that certain blessings will be given if they repent, fight Satan, and overcome. It was a promise. 
When these promises were given, the seven messengers had already been established on earth. And it was after the Nicolaitans had entered amongst them. Yes, these are facts we should know. That is why the letters were sent. I will not go into every detail of chapters 2 and 3, since it's already recorded in the Bible. I'm sure you're already aware of the content. Jesus promised that the messengers would receive certain blessings if they repent and fight and overcome the enemy who is Satan's pastor, the Nicolaitans. Then they should have fought and overcome them. But did they win? And did they repent after reading the letters? What happened after this? John heard the same voice he heard in chapter 1. Where did that voice come from? It came from heaven above. And afterwards, he was told to come up there. Thus, the new John, after sending the letters, went up to heaven. What do you think he saw there? He saw the throne of God. So when it says, after this, in chapter 4, it's referring to after having sent the letters in chapters 2 and 3. John was told what would take place after this, and afterwards he was shown the throat in heaven. He also heard many sounds, like the sound of rumblings and peals of thunder. He saw the movements that were very fast, they were very busy, but that's understandable. Since the seven messengers whom Jesus appointed were behaving like Adam and spiritually eating food sacrificed to idols, the kingdom of heaven couldn't just sit there and do nothing about this, right? John heard rumblings and peals of thunder and their movements working like lightning. As he was seeing all of this, he was also told that the throne in heaven, all its structure and organization, will come down to earth. What does he see after that? He sees what's described in chapter 5. There was a scroll, a book, in God's right hand, and it was closed with seven seals. And since it was in God's hand, there was no one in heaven or on earth who could understand the content of the book. No one knew. Up until now, we saw that John was chosen in chapter 1, then passing through chapters 2 and 3, we saw that he went up to heaven and saw the throne in the spiritual realm. What did Jesus say when he was on earth at the first coming? He said he was the only one who's been up in heaven, and he was also the only one who came from heaven. Also, when Revelation is fulfilled, New John is definitely a real person who appears on earth. He hears Jesus' voice, then sees what's described in chapters 2 and 3, sends the letters, and then goes up to heaven because he was called up there and he sees even the throne in heaven. What do you all think about this? The one who's seen the throne in heaven should be able to testify about it because he saw it, right? Also, he will know who the seven messengers are, whom Jesus appointed in Revelation 2 and 3 because he saw them too, right? He will also know who Satan's pastor is, the one who fed the messengers food sacrifice to idols because he saw this too, right? I don't know if you will believe this or not. I'm sure you will believe according to what you are feeling. I know the names of these seven messengers and the names 
and even the faces of seven Satan's pastors, the Nicolaitans, is because I saw them. Even the throne in heaven, because I saw it. It's true. Little children are happy when we give them candy, right? They'll choose candy over money because they don't know the value. Just like that, people who don't understand the value might not realize how great something is even after they receive it. They don't know what to feel. Why do you think God, after having this book recorded, seal it up with seven seals and have it in His hand for 2,000 years? For 2,000 years, He had it in His hand. So there was no one in heaven and on earth who understood the meaning of this book. There was no one. It is written in Psalm 78 to speak in parables regarding the hidden things from of old. That means God had secrets about heaven. But he did not reveal them to the people yet at that time. God, who prophesied these words, then came to Jesus and spoke in parables. It even says that Jesus said nothing without using a parable. However, Jesus' disciples came to him and asked why he spoke in parables instead of speaking clearly. Jesus then answered, The secrets of the kingdom of heaven are given to you, but not to others. He also said that he spoke in parables so that they would not be able to perceive after hearing them. We must think about parables, figurative language, and the secrets of heaven. Jesus could not make everything plainly known, but instead spoke about the secrets of heaven, speaking figuratively using parables, so that it can be hidden from the enemy. Everyone, what do you think as you hear these words? We must be pastors who belong to God, not pastors who belong to the devil. Isn't that true? That's what I truly believe. And this world of God's creation must return to God since He is a creator of all things. God should rule over the earth since He's the one who created it. This was such an important mission that God could not risk Satan finding out about the secrets of heaven since Satan could mimic God's work. Then God's plan would not be fulfilled if Satan confused people with his own work. That's why the secrets of heaven were told in parables. Thus the words Jesus spoke at the first coming were parables, words that were hidden, and the book in God's hand is also recorded in parables, locked up with seven seals and held tightly in God's hand. Who could possibly know the content of the book then? No one, right? Isn't that true, pastors? We must speak the truth without anything holding us back. And we must know what is true, too. Then these things must take place, don't they? If there is no one sending the letters, no one can receive them either. If no one went up to heaven and saw what's there, no one would know either. Isn't that true? Who is needed is someone who hear God's word and speak exactly as he heard it, regardless of his level of education. It would be a much better thing to speak the truth instead of harsh words of criticism or threats. No matter how young a person is, speaking the truth is so much better. I am sure this is what pleases God as well. So there was no one who could open this book in God's hand, whether in heaven or on earth or under the earth. 
That is why John and the new John cried upon learning this. They wept and wept. How could this be? What caused John to be this upset that he would cry so hard even after being called up to heaven? There must be a reason behind it. Then one of the 24 elders, John saw in chapter 4, told him not to weep because the lamb, the root of David, has triumphed and is able to take the scroll, open the seals, and look inside it. John must have been very happy to hear this after crying. Yes, it's true. What happens after that? Jesus takes a scroll from God's hand. He takes a sealed scroll. Then starting in chapter 6, he starts to open up the seals. And there's something notable in chapter 5. In verses 9 and 10, it says that the blood Jesus shed at the first coming, the blood that was shed, was needed to purchase people to make them to be a kingdom and priests. The blood that Jesus said he would not eat again until his Father's kingdom comes, in other words, the Passover, which is a work of salvation, it was shed for the purpose of creating God's kingdom and priests, and it is needed at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. How significant is this, everyone? Many might say they are already saved because Jesus already shed his blood for them. However, Jesus clearly said that he would not eat the Passover meal again until his Father's kingdom comes. And it's when his Father's kingdom comes, Jesus purchases people with the blood he shed, make them into God's kingdom and priests. Does it also say in Revelation 1 verses 5 and 6 that the priests have been freed from sin because of Jesus' blood? This is why Jesus had to shed His blood at the first coming. Shouldn't we know how each of these verses in the Bible are taking into effect in the past and present time? Pastors, it is wrong to speak interpretations of Revelation before this book is open because they are just merely owns one thoughts and man's teachings. How could anyone frivolously give their own meanings of Revelation before the book is even opened? If any pastor out there might have done such things, we must repent. It becomes the most certain when it is seen and heard at the time it's fulfilled. It's true. It's a book that God sealed up Himself. So how could anyone say that they are smart enough to know its meaning? Things that are unknown should remain that way until heaven makes it known to us. Now we will move on to chapter 6 after having gone over chapter 5. Who did what in chapter 6? Chapter 6 describes how Jesus the Lamb judges the chosen people using the four living creatures seen in chapter 4. It's not a judgment of the enemy, but of the chosen people. What did the chosen people do that they needed to receive judgment? That is something to think about. Jesus said that at the second coming, when Revelation is fulfilled, it will be like the times of Noah and Lot. What happened in Noah's time? The sinful descendants of Adam were all wiped away. They were all wiped away. It says in Lamentations that God strung His bow against His people and slayed them. This is what judgment is like. Does something good happen as the seals start to open? No. It was judgment 
of the chosen people. The white horse appears, then a red horse, a black horse, and a pale horse. The horses come out and bring judgment. But a few remnant seed remain while everything else comes to its end. During judgment, they hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. Yes, they did. So, what was it like at the time of judgment? It says, the stars fell to the earth as late figs draw, drop from a fig tree shaken by a strong wind, and the sky receded too. There was judgment in heaven and earth. How great was this judgment? Even the sky and the earth were no longer there. That was not all either. The sun, moon, and stars in the sky darkened, and the stars fell. This was a huge judgment. And those who are thrown out from this judgment end up killed in chapters 8 and 9. I plan to explain up to chapter 7 today. This judgment was a judgment of the chosen people. But what did they do so wrong that they would be judged although they were the chosen people of heaven? We can see in Revelation chapter 13 that the chosen people are known as God's tabernacle of heaven. They should have been obedient to God and revere Him. But the organization of the dragon, which is the serpent and Satan, enters among the chosen people. Those who entered fight the people of the tabernacle of heaven and win, making them receive the mark of the beast and even worship it. Instead of worshiping God, they worshiped the beast. Isn't this an act of betrayal? Even in chapters 2 and 3, they were sent letters to repent because they were eating food sacrificed to idols of the devil. They were receiving the teachings of the devil, committing adultery with the spirits of the devil. God could not just let them continue like this. This is why judgment in chapter 6 was poured out upon the chosen people not the enemy. That was their judgment. I have seen the reality of what's described in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. I've sent the letters too. And that's not all. In Revelation chapter 13, I was there at the location where I saw them receiving the mark from the idols, the beast, that is the pastors of the devil, on their foreheads, and hands and worship them. I know this very well. It's because I saw this happen, which is why I'm able to give you this testimony. I know their names, faces, and everything. I am not speaking things that are made up. I'm explaining what happened, the fulfillment of the Bible. What do you think, everyone? The sinful world of Adam came to its end at the time of Noah. Sinners of Lot's time also met their end with fire. Isn't that true? Whenever an era became corrupt and sinful, God brought an end to that era and started a new era. Yes, it's true. The heaven and the earth, sky, sun, and the moon all spiritually fell and passed away. They all met their end. We should think about this deeply. Jesus said that it would be like the times of Noah and Lot at the time of the end. This means the end and judgment of an era, isn't it? That's why Jesus used the four living creatures around the throne in chapter 6 and brought judgment upon the chosen people who betrayed and brought them to an end. That is how spiritually the heavens and the earth and everything else were no longer there. It says in Revelation chapter 21 that the first heaven 
and first earth passes away, and a new heaven and new earth are created. The time this is happening is now. It is right now. The new heaven and new earth are created. The first heaven and first earth pass away, and the new heaven and new earth are created, and this is happening now. Didn't the previous era come to an end at the time of Noah, and then a new era began? This is what that means. That's how an era comes to an end. And what does it say in the four Gospels about this? We can reference Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. The subjects of the kingdom. The subjects of the kingdom receive judgment. And they are thrown out, outside into the darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's those who are harvested from the east, west, north, and south who take their seats in heaven. But Jesus also said that there will be many who are last, who will be first, and many who are first, who will become last. What does it mean that some are first and some are last? Well, in our Shincheonji church, exams are frequently given to check how much one is sealed. We take these tests often to see if we have been truly sealed with the Word. Shouldn't we be sealed perfectly and write these words of promise in our hearts? Jesus gave us a new covenant, and the new covenant is the book of Revelation. Anyone who adds or subtracts from this book of Revelation cannot go to heaven. This is the law of heaven. Thus, we must seal this law in our hearts so much that we can even read it while running. In order to be the people who actually carried out the new covenant, God's new covenant is explained very well in Hebrews 8 verses 7 to 13. Yes, it is. So, pastors, are all the events described in Revelation written in your hearts? Does it say we can still go to heaven without writing it in our heart? It says that one cannot go to heaven if one adds anything to Revelation or subtracts from it. So please, listen carefully and well. We are not being told to follow any will of man. We must act according to God's will. Isn't that right? That's why I'm saying all this. After that, those who receive judgment and are thrown out in chapter 6 become killed in chapters 8 and 9. Then we should find out what happens in chapters 8 and 9, right? If the last of the seven seals open, that means the entire book is opened, correct? Because the entire book is open, it is then we can read and understand what's inside the book and even see the fulfillment according to the prophecies of the book. And what is the sound that makes all of this known? It's the seven trumpet sounds that make all of the reality known to the world. That's what starts to happen at the last and seventh seal is open in chapter 8. But I wanted to go to chapter 7, which comes after chapter 6. What does it say in chapter 7? It says, after this. What does the phrase after this refer to here? It's referring to the events after the judgment of the chosen people who betrayed in chapter 6. After that was all dealt with, the work of sealing comes in chapter 7. It would help in understanding better to compare Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 3 to this content here. It will help with understanding. What must soon take place refers to the events of Revelation. Yes, the events of Revelation. So, why is this necessary? 
It says that God sent his angel to give commands to John to make known what must soon take place to the servants. Thus, what must soon take place is the book of Revelation, that is, the fulfillment of Revelation. It also says that John testifies to everything he saw, and for whom is his testimony given? It's the servants. But who are the servants? The 144,000, the 12 tribes, are the servants according to Revelation chapter 7. The events of Revelation take place so that these events can be shown to these servants who are to receive salvation. So we must remember what was said in the beginning at first, together with Revelation chapter 7. And please keep in mind that after this, in Revelation 7, refers to after the judgment of Revelation 6. In Revelation chapter 6, the four living creatures brought judgment, and judgment is referred to as winds. An angel appears and stops the wind from blowing. What does he say? He says not to harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. He's saying not to judge them. And how is the judgment given in chapter 6? Jesus judged the chosen people through the four living creatures, correct? The army of heaven of the four living creatures were halted, and then the work of sealing began. But is the sealing done on just anyone's forehead? No, right? As we take a look at those who are sealed, it says in Revelation 14 that the first fruits are sealed in Mount Zion with the names of God and the Lamb. And they are the 144,000, the 12 tribes. The 144,000 are the first ripened wheat. Yes, the first fruits. They're the wheat. This means that the seed Jesus sowed at the first coming, which was God's seed, is harvested and sealed to be created as God's people and kingdom. To seal someone means to write the words of God, the new covenant that is revelation, the prophecies and its fulfillment in the hearts of the people so that they can perceive. Yes, engraved on them to the point they can even read while running. It's because anyone who adds or subtracts from it cannot go to heaven. That's the law of heaven, isn't it? It's God's law. The words of the law, the book of Revelation, must be sealed in our hearts. This is what's done to the ripened wheat who are harvested, correct? We can also think about Matthew chapter 13 regarding this. It says, at the time of harvest, those who are born of God's seed are harvested, but those who are not born of God's seed remain in their field, their church. But those who remain are tied up in bundles to be burned, and only those who are born of God's seed are harvested. The ones born of God's seed, the ripened wheat, are harvested and sealed to be made into the 144,000 God's 12 tribes. They are God's kingdom. They are God's kingdom and people. We must know this. The work of sealing begins, and there are 12,000 people who are sealed in each of the tribes. So there are 144,000 of them in total. Does that make sense? I hope you are understanding this content. I keep losing the track of time since I'm 
talking about a lot of different things. I might go a little over our set time today, but I ask that you please keep listening. And after the number of those who are harvested and sealed reach 144,000, what happens? A great tribulation comes after this. It must be a huge tribulation. Regarding this tribulation, it says in Revelation chapter 3 that it's a time of testing on those who live on the earth. It truly is a time of testing, and the entire world goes through this great tribulation. After what event? After the 144,000 are sealed. That's what it means. Then the great multitude in white come streaming after their sins are atoned by the blood of Jesus. Yes, it says they come before God's throne. So the ones who are sealed earlier are the 144,000. Then the great multitude in white come out of the great tribulation after. This tells us that the 144,000 and the great multitude in white are the ones who receive salvation in the entire book of Revelation. But the remaining do not. We can see this, correct? Yes. So once all the great multitude and white come out of the Great Tribulation, there's no one else left to save. Then that will be the end of the Great Tribulation too, correct? Yes. In each of the eras in the past, we can see what fulfilled first, then what happens after that, then what happens after that. That's what we must know. What kind of a believer would not have any interest in learning how God's work is being fulfilled, when His Word is being fulfilled, and how heaven and eternal life fulfills when we are desiring these things? It says, even the smallest letter, the least stroke of a pen of God's Word will be fulfilled. That's why we can believe in His Word. It doesn't matter who's speaking God's word, whether it's a young child, an old man, or a passerby. If it's the truth of God, then we must believe and follow, shouldn't we? Pastors, will you not follow the truth? Will you not believe in God's word? If it has been fulfilled, shouldn't you check if it truly did fulfill according to the Bible? Why are you not examining it for yourself? Is it all right if one ends up in hell and you can care less about heaven? Pastors who belong to God must walk with Him and guide many people so that they can seek truth from their mouths. How could anyone say, you do not need to know God's word? He will forgive you anyways. That kind of forgiveness does not exist. We must be born of God's seed just as God's Word says that we should. And according to God's Word, we must be harvested and sealed to go to heaven. God will not approve anyone who ignores His Word and boasts by saying that they are going to go to heaven no matter what. That is not acceptable to God. God said, if anyone adds or subtracts from Revelation, they will not go to heaven, but will instead receive curses. That is why we must all believe in the Word. We must believe when the Word is fulfilled and follow where the Word guides us, shouldn't we? Everyone, we have a book of life in Shincheonji. We commonly call it registration book, but it says in the Bible, it's the book of life. One's name must be recorded in the book of life to go to heaven. What if this book lays open at the gate of heaven and someone asks if your name is in that book? When you have registered and from what country? If one's name is not found there, one cannot enter. Why not? It's because it shows that that person is not a person of heaven. 
that that person is not a citizen of heaven and thus they cannot enter. That is what it says at the end of Revelation chapter 1, 21, in verse 27. That is why God's word is the same no matter where you are, no matter what country you are from. The Bible is the same everywhere. It's not like only half of it is available in one country and only a third in some other country. What matters is if we did what the Word says or not. A person who acts according to the wor Word of God is someone who has been created according to the Word, right? At the time of Revelation, it is a time of recreation. It's not about the old things of the past. People must be recreated with the revealed Word. That is how one can be God's family and a person of the Kingdom of Heaven. Heaven is not somewhere you naturally just go as time goes on or if one passes away. Shouldn't we always follow God's word whether we live or die? It's true. Just gathering a few people and using them as a way to make a living until they die is not what faith is all about. That's just a gathering of people and just a tool of making a living in the world. That's not true faith that follows God's will. It is only God's word, the food for eternal life that can give us eternal life as we belong to God. Isn't that true? The devil gives his own food too which is the wine of adultery, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Food from God is the flesh and blood of Jesus, and His words are the food that endures to eternal life. No one can go to heaven if they forsake His word. Since we have already begun our life of faith, and we now know the will of God, let us follow God's word and enter the kingdom of heaven. We must go to heaven, right? God even put in the effort to have His one and only Son bleed to death so we can be saved from sin. Isn't that so? If we understand this, then we must follow God's will well and act according to it. Let's put God's will to practice really well. He gave us these words with blood. So turning away from the Word is the same as turning away from God. There is no God if there is no Word. It's not just that the Word isn't there, but it means that God is not there either. The Word is life itself, so a person who does not have the Word doesn't have life either. There's no different than just, that's no different than just any person of the world. Jesus said that anyone who keeps God's word, Jesus' word, will not taste death. He's referring to eternal life, isn't he? What should we choose? Should we choose to boast and be respected by many people but end up in hell later? Isn't it better, even if we have to suffer, even if we receive persecution, to have God's word and to do His will and enter heaven? Dear pastors, let us all go to heaven. Let us teach our congregation correctly too. There's only one Bible and there's only one God. There's only one kingdom of God, not two. Why are there so many religions in the world? That's against God's teaching. This is a new era of Revelation's fulfillment. And it is the new heaven and new earth. There's only one. This is how we can enter the kingdom of heaven. And God in heaven, in the spiritual realm, will come down to. If you understand this, let us all be one within God. Let us eat God's word, the food of life, be loyal and faithful to God, and fulfill our duty as His children. I'll finish sharing God's word here. And please contact us if you have any questions or if there's anything you would like to learn more about. I will be more than happy to receive your questions and answer them. Wouldn't that be good? We are not two, we are one. 
We also promised to be one within God at the World Peace Summit. Thus, I'll say we are one so that we can truly become one. We are one. Thank you very much. Were you blessed by the word today? Let's give one more round of applause to God and the chairman who have testified to these precious words of life. Let's offer up a prayer of thanks to the Creator God who has allowed this opportunity to perceive the true meaning of revelation and the secrets of heaven. Father God, we thank you for sending the promised shepherd to testify on your behalf the words of the secrets of heaven and revelation, which is the hidden manna. Through the words that were given today, please help us to perceive who am I according to the Bible? Have I been harvested and belonged to the twelve tribes? What era are we living in today? How has the fulfilled reality of the Bible appeared? And understand the true meaning of your words. Believe in them and enter heaven. Right now, a huge trumpet is being sounded worldwide through the Shincheonji online seminars. Through these words of life, help the people who are in pain and difficulty. Feel your great love and allow us to have hope in heaven that is being fulfilled here on earth. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is living and working. Amen. In obedience to Jesus' command, currently Shincheonji Church of Jesus is testifying to the words of the secrets of heaven, which has been opened, through the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meaning seminars on every Monday and Thursday. The Shincheonji online seminar is being broadcasted simultaneously in 24 languages around the world through Shincheonji official YouTube channel. In addition to the message you heard today, if you have any questions or inquiries about Shincheonji Church of Jesus and its doctrines, please contact us using the representative number shown on the screen. We will provide kind and detailed information. Yes, now we will close the Shincheonji online seminar today with a prayer that the Lord has taught us. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Family of God, thank you for joining us.